Hi guys, and welcome to the lesson on regression uh, for S1 module for AS Maths. Um, this goes with this is part one, and it goes with um, a handout which has got two sides. Um, so make sure you've got that, and you're going to be filling in notes as we go along. And there's a fair bit to write for some of it, so you know maybe just pause the video at certain points um, to give yourself time to write. Anyway, here we go. So regression. This is the chapter following on from correlation, and it uses some of the same formulae and bits and bobs. And again, um, you need to take a little bit more care with this because there are more pitfalls, but essentially it's using a formula with a little bit of interpreting um, uh, thrown in there as well. Um, but what it's all about basically is finding a line of best fit. Um, and um, we're used to doing a line of best fit by hand, by eye. So we get a ruler, we line it up, um, and we say, yeah, that looks about right, and we draw it. And this gives us a good approximation for what the relationship is, the linear relationship, but it's not particularly precise. And we want something that is precise. And regression um, is the process by which we do that. Um, so if we take this example here, um, very simplified, um, scatter diagram between two variables, there's only four points on it but it gives you the idea. Now the idea is if we take any given line and what we can do is we can work out the vertical distance between each point that we've plotted and the line um, and these um, these allow us to work out the best line, the line of best fit which we call the regression line. So I'm talking about all these values here. So this distance here, this vertical distance here, this one, this one. If we were to work out all of those distances and square them, and it's important to square them because the ones below the line will have a negative distance, the ones above will have a positive distance. But if we square them and add it all up, um, the regression line is the line which will have the smallest total when we do that. Um, now we don't have to do a long-winded process really, it sort of pops out nicely from the formulae. Um, so you can be grateful for that. And I'll show you in a moment just exactly how we do that. Um, but just uh, a bit of vocabulary here, these little values, these differences are called the residuals. And well we've seen already that regression, I've said that regression is this process which takes these residuals um, and it minimizes the sum of the squares. So square them, add them all up. Whichever line gives you the smallest total, that is your regression line. And hopefully that makes sense because it effectively means the line where, on average, the points are closest to the line. Um, so this is what you need to put in your notes here, just to, by way of explanation. Um, and then we'll move on to the next little bit. So what we get from the process of regression is, well, it's the equation of a straight line. Um, we don't use y equals mx plus c. We use something that's very similar. Um, you can see exactly how it relates to it. We'll use y equals a plus bx. OK, that's a relationship. Um, so effectively, it's like we've swapped around the mx and the c, and we've just called them different things. But essentially, this will be the gradient of your line and this would be the y-intercept. And to get this uh, this linear equation we just use this nice little formula and it's given to you in the formula book so you don't have to memorize it, you just have to get good at using it. It's our friend from the correlation chapter SXY divided by SXX. So that effectively gives us the gradient of our regression line and then to find the y-intercept we take the mean of the y values and we subtract b times the mean of the x values. So obviously we have to calculate b first, so we use this first and then we calculate the mean of y and x and we can use that to calculate a and then we've got our equation of our regression line. Just a note on the vocabulary here again, um, the line of y on x Okay, on x means effectively y in terms of x. Um, so it's going to be y equals something. So when it's y on x, the thing that comes first in that little phrase 
is the thing that comes first in your equation, y equals something. Okay, so we're going to have a look at an example, and hopefully you'll um, find it uh, fairly straightforward. Well, you never know. So this is, uh, this is an example. There was an experiment in which different masses were placed on a spring, and the resulting length of the spring was measured. Um, now, if you do physics, you'll know that there ought to be a linear relationship here, so hopefully we will find one. And we've got these values here. We've got five pairs of data. And, well, we've got a whole bunch of information here that we're given that's done for us. So we've got x bar, the mean. Um, we've got y bar, the, we, the mean of the y values. We've got the sum of x, sum of x squared, sum of xy, sum of y squared. We've got, well, let's just take a moment and think, have we got everything we need? Well, SXY up here, that involves, if you consult your formula book or your the previous sheet on correlation, that involves uh, sigma XY, we've got that, and it involves sigma X and sigma Y. Okay, so we've got those. And then SXX here, that simply involves sigma X squared, which we've got, and the square of sigma X. Okay, so this. So we've actually got all the data that we need to work out these two values. And in addition to that, we're just going to need y bar and x bar, and they're given to us. So, um, hmm, not even any adding up to do here, folks. I've made it quite easy for you. So let's go ahead and work that out. So the first thing that we need to work out is uh, SXY, or SXX. We'll do SXY first. Um, going back to the definition, that's sum of the product of xy minus sigma x and sigma y divided by n. Um, so let's go ahead and figure that out. Sigma xy, where are we? That's up here. So 18,238 minus sigma x, which is 300 times sigma y, where are you? Which is 288.6 divided by n. Well, there were five pairs of values, so n is 5, and if we work that out, that comes to 922. This is calculator paper, so you can check that on your calculator. Um, and so the next thing would be SXX, and that is defined as the sum of x squared minus sum of x squared over n. So sigma x squared is 22,000. We're going to subtract 300 squared divided by 5. And I'll give you that one as well. That's 4,000. Okay, so I've got my two values there that I need for my formula for, um, for b. If we just have a quick look back, I've got this formula here. <coughs> for B, and I'm going to use this one to work out A. So straight away I can say B, so this is the member the gradient of my regression line is SXY over SXX. So 922 over 4000. And that comes to 0.23. Oh, five. Let me just check. Uh, yep, that's fine. I was just checking that that was an exact value, not a rounded value from my notes. And that's exact. And that's important because we're now going to use this value of b in another calculation. And using an exact value or a value with many decimal places um, means that we don't lose any accuracy going to the next stage. So uh, from that, I can work out a. So a is defined as y bar minus b times x bar. And by the way, a useful extension, interesting extension if you want to spend some time on this, is to work out why this formula works. Thinking about what the actual linear regression line equation is, um, y equals a plus bx, why should this be uh, the formula for, for a? Uh, I challenge you. Come and tell me if you think you figured it out. Anyway, so let's work this out. Y bar, uh, let's see, where's Y bar? Up here, 57.72. Uh, 
minus uh, b times x. So we've got 0 0.2305 times x bar, I beg your pardon, so that's times 60. And if you work that out, uh, we get 43.89. So those are my key values, really. That's the gradient of my graph. That's the intercept. So we normally write it as y equals a plus bx. We write the intercept first. That's just the convention in statistics. So 43.89 plus 0 0.2305 times x and that is a regression line of y on x. Um, before we go on, just as a quick aside, this remember this tells you what the equation is for the line that best fits your data but it doesn't tell you how well it fits your data so this could be the best of a bad bunch if there isn't a very good linear relationship so there's not much of a correlation you'll still get an equation here um, so, really, this goes hand in hand with the previous chapter, um, and it would be interesting to have a look at this data and work out what the correlation is, what the product moment correlation coefficient r is. Um, if r is close to one, then we know that actually it's a good, reliable relationship. Okay, let's move on. Okay, just a quick aside here, just to get some definitions in. Um, these won't surprise you. This is what an independent variable is. There are two types of variable. Independent variable is one where the value is set independently of the other variable. Um, it's also known as an explanatory variable. Um, and then we have a dependent variable. Um, and this is one where the value depends upon or responds to, which is why we call it sometimes a response variable, uh, the other variable. Um, so I'm not going to go on about that, that's just a definition that you need to know, although what I'll add is that the independent variable is usually plotted on the x-axis and the dependent variable on the y-axis. Okay, and that's by convention, so it makes sense to stick to that. Um, so if you just quick look, quickly look at this example, a uh, record company is looking to see if there is a link between album sales and the amount of money spent on advertising. So they could make a scatter graph, they could look at pairs of data, so for each album they would want to look at how much money was spent on advertising and compare that to uh, the number of albums sold. Um, so which one of these would be the independent variable? Which one effectively is being set independently and perhaps is causing the other variable to change? And a bit of common sense suggests that the amount of money spent, that is the independent variable. Okay, so money spent is the answer there. This is uh, set independently, and perhaps that determines, um, well, they're looking to see whether it does, um, the number of albums sold. So the album sales um, would be the dependent variable. Okay, at this point you've been sitting around for nearly a quarter of an hour. Maybe go get a cup of tea and just go back over the bit of the lesson that you've just seen. Make sure that makes sense to you. Make sure you understand what's going on there. Um, rewind and go over any bits that you weren't sure about. Um, and then we'll have a look at regression with coding. Yeah. Okay, hopefully you're feeling suitably refreshed. Uh, we're nearly at the end of this sheet. We just have to do an example looking at coding and how it's used. We love coding, don't we? Coding is our friend. Now the question here is, does coding affect the equation of the regression line? So effectively the question is, if we've got an equation uh, y equals a plus bx, something like that, and then we code the data um, in some way, um, so we replace y with something else, um, replace x with something else, and perhaps x minus a constant divided by another constant, is that going to change the relationship? So it makes more sense to look at a specific example. This is one um, way that some data has been coded. Um, the original data is C and M. So the pairs of data were C, which is uh, the percentage of carbon 
um, in samples of steel, and M is the temperature that it was heated to. And in this example, the data has been coded already. So to get the X value, this new defined X value, they've multiplied by 10, um, the percentage of carbon. And to get Y, they've taken uh, the temperature in degrees, they've subtracted 700 divided by 5. And you can see why they've given us some nice, simple data to look at there. So the question is, uh, does coding affect the equation of the regression line? Is the equation that links uh, M and C going to be the same numerically? Is it going to look the same as the equation that links um, uh, Y and X or not? Is it going to be different is the question. Um, talk to the person next to you if you're with someone. If you're at home on your own, just have a think about it. Maybe pause the video. Um, but the answer is, well, yes. It definitely affects it. Although not stupid, no one's stupid here. Um, but it might not be obvious to you why. Um, but I'll leave that to you to have a think about it and come and find me in school if you want to ask me about it. Um, and I might mention it in class when we go over this. So it does, and you'll see, it actually will become obvious when we do this example, when we have to convert between the two equations, it'll become obvious why it affects it. Um, now, here, um, we're going to work out S, X, Y, and S, X, X. So remember, X and Y, this is the coded data. So we're going to just work with the coded data that we've been given, and then the, at the end, we're going to have to transform it back um, from Y and X to, to M and C. So we're going to effectively decode it. So first of all, we want to work out S, X, Y, and S, X, X. So have we got all the data we need? So for S, X, Y, we need to know uh, sigma xy, which we've got, that's good, and we need to know sigma x and sigma y. Uh, we don't have those, so let's quickly add those up. Okay, if we add these up, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you can use Gauss's formula to work these out, or you can just work it out, or you can wait for me to do it. Yeah, I thought you might go for that one. So, sigma x, if you add up that row, is 36. There may be some deliberate mistakes in here, so you better check it. If we add up all the y values, sigma y is 144. Um, so we've got everything we need now, I think, to work out these two values. So let's have a go. S x y is sigma x y minus sigma x sigma y over n. So that's going to be 478 minus 36 times 144 over 8 is my n. So SXY is, where is it, minus 40.4, that's interesting, it's negative, minus 40.4. Okay, we'll do the same thing for S, X, X. Okay, work that out. That's sigma X squared minus sigma X in brackets squared. No, nope, not divided by 2. That should be an N. So we're looking at 204 minus 36 squared over 8. And that comes to 74.4. So first of all, before we carry on, what does it mean that this is negative? Do you know? Or think about if you're working out the product moment correlation coefficient r, s x y is your numerator. That's the bit that goes on top. Okay, and the sign of that determines the sign of r. So minus 40.4 means there is a negative correlation between these two variables. We don't know how strong it is, but it's there. It's a negative correlation. Um, okay, so now I want to find the regression line of y on x. I want y equals an equation with x in it. Um, so I need to work out my a and b like we just did. So giving myself a bit more space. You've got space on your sheet, hopefully. b, oops, don't want that. b is given by sxy divided by sxx. 
So minus 40.4 divided by 74.4. And that comes to minus 0 0.54301. And we've got a few more decimals there. Um, five significant figures there is enough because I know that later on I'm not going to be giving my final answer to quite as much accuracy. Um, so that allows me to work out A. A is Y bar minus B times X bar. Well, Y bar is the sum of my Y values. So sigma Y, which I worked out before, was 144, divided by the number of values we've got. So divided by 8. Um, so to subtract B, so uh, minus 0 0.54301 and the dots, times, th uh, let's see, so X bar is the sum of X, which is 36, divided by the number of values, which is 8. And what I've actually done is I've just kept this value in the calculator. So I'm going to use the ANTS key when I work this out. Um, and what it comes to is 16.3548 and some more decimal places after that. <coughs> so my equation between y and x is y equals a plus bx. So y equals 16.3548 minus so it's, it's plus bx but b is negative so I'm going to go with minus 0 0.54301 uh, lots of x. That is my regression line. So that was part B. Now part C is to make the data meaningful by rather than using these two coded values, x and y, to transform it back to being C and M that was from the original data. So we have to use relationships that we've got and substitute them in. So we're substituting x equals 10c. Okay, that was the first bit of coding that we used. And they've used y equals m minus 700 divided by 5. So if we substitute all of that into here, uh, we get the following. Replacing y with m minus 700 over 5. So that equals... Well, this bit stays the same, 16.3548 minus 0 0.54301 times x, and x is 10c. I don't know why I've got the brackets there, we don't really need those. Um, if we multiply through by 5, we need to tidy this up, and eventually, because it asks for uh, the regression line of m on c, that means you want m equals. So we want to get rid of the 700 from here and the 5 just to leave the m. So we do the 5 first. We'll multiply through by that. Multiply this by 5. We get 81.774. And it dot, dot, dots again. Um, and multiply this. If we can multiply these two together, we get 5.4301. Times that by 5, we get uh, 27. 0.1505 and that's times C so we're almost there we just have to add 700 to both sides so add 700 to get rid of this M equals 781.77 etc minus 27.15 5c and as this is my final answer um, I'm going to round these numbers now I don't want all these dot dot dots anymore this is the thing that I've been working towards so I'm going to round it to uh, three significant figures um, because when we're considering the data that we had to start with there was in fact there was less accuracy than that in the data we had to start with there's only two significant figures so I definitely need to be rounding away some of this uh, accuracy here. I can't give it to five significant figures. So M is equal to, uh, if we round it to three significant figures, 782 minus 27.2 C. And that is my final answer. 
Okay, that's the end of part one. Um, you deserve a break. Go and have one. And um, I'll see you in part two. See you.